Steve Smith was the All-American kid. I saw him play in high school. He was dominant then, an All-American type player. Captain of Penn State's 1986 National Championship team. A running back for nine seasons in the NFL. He even married an Oakland Raiders cheerleader. Life was good until it wasn't. This is Steve Smith now, 45 years old, unable to move. His cheerleader wife, Chie, now his full-time nurse. This is his universe, a hospital bed in the living room of his house near Dallas, Texas. He can no longer eat. That's what this tube in his stomach is for. He can't speak either, so listen closely. Your wife told us that you're a prisoner. Do you know how she meant that? Yes, she means that I could not do anything for myself. A computer speaks for him because every muscle in his body, even the ones that control speech, have shut down. How are you doing that? With my eyes. Ah, uh, so you look at a certain letter and you spell out certain words and then you can talk to me that way? Yes. He focuses on the computer with his eyes and it's programmed to pick up his eye movements. That's how you communicate. That's how we communicate. Suction, please. Okay. I'm torn between that's really sweet and that's really painful. You're right. I think you nailed it right on the button. It's it's a bit of both. I think we've, we've gotten so used to the program that we've forgotten that... He doesn't have a voice. Smith wasn't paralyzed in an accident. He's the victim of a rare disease that slowly destroys the muscles of the body, one by one, and keeps going until it reaches the lungs and the victim chokes to death. There's only one part of the body the disease doesn't destroy, the mind, and that just may be the cruelest twist of all. Because right up until the end, Steve Smith will remain perfectly aware of his own destruction. The fact that his mind is so sharp, that's, that's tough. It breaks my heart, it does. It's heartbreaking. It's like losing the lottery. How else to describe getting a disease that strikes only one in about 100,000 people? But there may be more to it than that because Steve Smith is far from alone. The odds say that of all the players in the NFL since 1960, only one, maybe two, should have gotten this disease, but we know of 14. 14, and it doesn't stop there. Turns out this disease is preying on elite athletes across different sports in different countries. And what makes all of this even more mysterious is that doctors don't know why. Sirs up in Canada was a defensive back and talking keep. Sirs up in Canada too, where outside Montreal. A former star in the Canadian Football League is withering away. His lungs are failing, which is why he needs a tube in his throat to breathe and a talking keyboard to speak. You lost your voice three years ago, and this is the way you communicate. Tony Proudfoot was a defensive back with the Montreal Alouettes when he retired, became a popular broadcaster for the team. But then something strange happened. First, his best friend from the Alouettes got the disease. Then Proudfoot did too. Is that when you started looking into seeing if any other football players had it? I have found eight players who played in the CFL had this disease and that is a very high number considering the percentages of a random population who would get this disease. Eight players from the CFL when the odds say there should be one at most. Proudfoot wants to know what's going on but realizes that time is not on his side. It is a death sentence with no hope on recovery. Nobody gets better. All there is is the length of the sentence. Perhaps it's fitting that this disease is named for an athlete. Today, the illness means line the widows of it. In McKeith, former Viking. ALS. 
had seeped into his... Has any... Yeah. And... Oh, wait, wait, wait! Not that Scott Ledoux, your friend from across town, the boxer, has it. One of our best friends. What are the odds? I know. I'm unbelievable. Oh, wait, wait! Quick, wait, wait by Ledoux, out of nowhere! Scott Ledoux, the former heavyweight contender, was watching his close friend Wally Hilgenberg fall apart when he learned he would be next. I went to visit Wally, and uh, he was unable to communicate with us. And uh, yeah, it was pretty scary for me. The Duke took on 11 world champions in his day. You see, I cry. So I could sleep every night. And Wally says good night to me every night. So. Mary knows that at some point she will lose her friend Scott too. His lungs are weakening every day, and he has accepted the inevitable. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, Scott. ALS doesn't get better as time goes on. You've already declined. You don't want a respirator. You know, I s signed a paper when I can't breathe anymore. It's going to be done. But down in Texas, Steve Smith is using a machine to breathe and stay alive. And is holding out hope for a miracle. When the doctor said he has ALS, yes. you knew that meant? I got sentence. And he refused to accept that as an answer and just said no. He's it's an athlete. Right. He refuses to accept right. to any kind of debate. Exactly. And when the subject of our conversation turned to head injuries, to the fact that they may well be responsible for his demise, Smith spent 12 minutes composing an answer in silence, his eyes darting from letter to letter. When he finally spoke, it was with frustration. I have hit people 40 to 50 times every week in practice. Not to mention that I hit people 50 to 70 times on game day 16 days a year. Not to mention summer camp every year. That is 50 times each practice. And we have two a days. Then frustration boiled over into tears. When is enough enough? You have the old school owners that say that is how you make them tough. I would love to see them get out there and hit heads against guys that are bigger than them. That would bring it to a close real fast. He's just frustrated. He wants more to be done. He wants more help from the NFL. You don't mind telling me, how much are they giving you because of his ALS? At this point, nothing. The NFL? <laughs> isn't paying anything no. towards his medical bills. No. The NFL has helped out the Smiths in the past, like they do with many down-and-out players. But they've never made it a policy to take care of players precisely because they have ALS. That's because there had never been a proven link before. But we contacted the NFL about the new discovery, and they say they will now consider doing just that. Now, just one more thing.